so for me, it's always been like, what is my message that I want to share? So like, what is my content about? And, and narrowing it down. And it's always been for me, it's been inspiring and encouraging people. So this is kind of the content that like that I'm sharing has to be inspiring or has to be encouraging. Um, and sometimes can be like funny, kind of quirky, kind of me. That's kind of who I am. Welcome to the Honest Designers Show, your transparent look into life as a modern designer. My name's Tom Ross and I'm the founder at designcuts.com and this week I'm joined by my fellow Brit and hand lettering expert Ian Barnard, American retro design expert Dustin Lee and the incredibly talented South African illustrator Lisa Glanz. This week we're joined by Stefan Koons, an incredible hand letterer, educator and one of our favorite creatives. Stefan has collaborated with brands including Apple, Adobe, Coca-Cola, Hallmark, Microsoft, some big names here, and many, many more. And much of his success has come from his massive Instagram community of nearly 400,000 people. Today, Stefan has kindly agreed to share some of his best strategies, the honest truth of what goes on behind the scenes, and so much more. So this is gonna be a good one, guys. Notepads at the ready. And without further ado, let's get into the show. Stefan, welcome to the show for a second time because we had technical hitches, but I am (laughs) (laughs) super excited to have you here. Um, Thank you so much for joining us. Welcome to the Honest Designer Show. Thank you for having me. I felt like we need like a little celebration noise or like a... Like confetti's (laughs) dropping. Yeah, confetti, exactly. Um, But no, really excited to have you on the show. I know this one's going to be jam-packed with value. You have so much to share. I love the audience that you've built up around your work. It's super inspiring. Um, Do you mind sharing a little bit with the audience beyond my intro, which obviously was perfect, right? I think I covered pretty much everything. (laughs) It it, it sounds exactly like my About Me page, which I'm like... (laughs) yeah yeah i'm not sure if i want to change that every time <laughs> i enjoy writing about myself in the third person exactly <laughs> well I actually i actually asked someone else to write that about me so nice. i didn't write that about myself that's smart but i put it on my website which is weird <laughs> um but yeah as i say welcome to the show for the few people out there who might not be so familiar w- with what you're doing do you mind giving like a bit of backstory with like where you started where you're at now and just how things are going yeah, so my name is Stefan Kunz, hand lettering artist in Zurich. Um, I started out as a banker, so I'm an ex-Swiss uh, banker. Uh, so you know everything that I talk about is money and cash, and we're all rich here. Uh, just um, quickly, can we hide Lisa's <laughs> illegitimate like piles of money with you? <laughs> oh, yeah. Cause she, she earns a lot of money, so if that's okay. The only one that's got the piles is Dustin. <laughs> Well, that that sounds that sounds really bad. <laughs> this is such a weird coincidence because I was a banker too. See, there you go. This is bankers crazy. like bankers make good designers, or like they make well, they make the money in the design business. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. Savvy businessman. Thank you. Is it, Finally, is somebody it, agrees with me. There isn't you it go. the Swiss banks that the in the like movies they always have an offshore account in a Swiss bank. <sighs> It's, oh, yeah. you know, it's, it's, like it's the, the yeah. worst it's the worst cliche that is ever out there it's it's so far from the truth like we're not even allowed to have like any money that is related to laundering money or to just uh, like illegal activities we have to check it all see but you would say that that's why hiding stuff in swiss bank accounts is so perfect is <laughs> because you would say that that's exactly what you would say if you were good at it that was damn convincing <laughs> well, actually Stefan. Well, yeah. well done. i can say I, I can tell you that much like if you're an american opening a swiss account is pretty much impossible that's how much i can tell you so dustin unfortunately you have to keep your millions in your bank account <laughs> yeah. okay i'll keep it right there i won't Perfect. send it to switzerland <laughs> for anyone listening instead of watching they are winking at each other right now and i love it um so um yeah that was a massive derailing of your intro but oh Stefan, yeah well you- <laughs> that is that is the fun part now comes the boring no um yeah. no <laughs> the boring part was the banking i quit my banking job in 2015 um not really knowing what i want, wanted to do but um yeah i started like I started earlier with Instagram posting and sharing and and building up a following. 
but it was still small when I quit my job and 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 at that time I I kind of saw like the benefit of putting that into it um, and and saw my account growing at a, at a regular pace and I counted up like any banker would do like open spreadsheet Excel and like count down like how much followers would I gain at that pace till the end of the year and I saw that I would hit a hundred thousand and so suddenly that became a milestone that I I saw would be reachable um, that I could reach and and uh, so that was for that year it was 2000 I think 16 2016 was when I wanted to hit the 100k and then every year after that been like the next 100k the next 100k and so this year 2019 is 400 hopefully and maybe wow. two 500 I don't know um, that's not the point um, but yeah it really started out as just one night um, laying in bed, like not being able to do anything and just knowing, okay, what can I do um, with my Instagram? I saw that there was no beauty in it. I saw that I was just posting a random picture about like my friends or some food or whatever. What year like, was this, did you say? So if, uh, That was 2012. Okay, so way back when. Which way is a, back. So you're 100K a year now, but it took you yeah. like four years to get to the first 100K. Yeah, so it took me like... Um, definitely two and a half years to get like, well, it took me like one, one and a half years to get like to 1K. Um, and then it took wow, me like okay. another year to get like to 10K um, and and so on. But yeah, like you always see like the fast growth, but like when you're small and you're fighting for your first 1000, like that's the hardest part. The next 10 yeah. is like, it's getting easier and easier. Oh, 100%. Yeah, yeah. maybe you can talk about this um, a little more, especially with your banking background. <laughs> uh, but I, I've talked about it in terms of like compound interest. Yeah. And obviously a lot of investors and people deal with that. And I love the principle of that because I think it's so applicable to what you're talking about with building an audience and building a community. And it's that very, very slow growth early on. But then it does seem to compound. You see that hockey stick, mm -hmm. right? That inflection point. Yeah. And I guess part of it is because of the social proof where if you've got a big account, more people are likely fo to follow you because you don't look like, oh, who's that random guy with like 500 followers? But is well, there more to it than that? There's there's definitely more to it. Like, I, I feel like if, if you just would start off with 500,000, like you wouldn't grow as much as well. Um, if with the same content you would have at zero or at 1,000, I think your content has increased and has gotten better to the point where it's it's getting interesting for that mass. Mm -hmm. And so if it's interesting for 500,000, um, it's easier to reach 600,000 because it's like 500,000 already like this. So 600,000 isn't too far fetched. Momentum. Um, yeah. yeah. So you, you build up momentum. Like, like what you see right now with James Lewis, for example, he's doing like a lot of 3D logo lettering. Um, like he paints those amazing and beautiful, satisfying videos of logos. And and he's having the same effect that uh, Seb Lester had a couple of years back. Um, like Seb Lester has over a million uh, subscribers um, on like followers on, on his Instagram. And he's one of the biggest accounts. And what he did was like really just draw logos uh, from scratch, kind of with with a pen, like like no one else would be able to. And and those logos are simple, but they're so like so memorable, and people just they see it and they know it and they love it. And and I've been like I've been using that technique right now for the last um, in the last two weeks. I did the Avenger logo. I did I saw that the the Game of Thrones logo just uh, today. I posted that one. Um, and the same technique applies to that as well. And the more you get into that rhythm of people are like, you know, you should follow this guy. He's drawing those amazing logos. Or like, if you get into that topic, when you have momentum, people will talk about you. People will share that and, and like, we'll see something again. They're like, they get into that rhythm. And as soon as you're in that rhythm, it's, it's great because you're growing fast. Um, can I, can yeah. I ask, um, so there now you're a banker of course so you, you dealt in money um so there's so many things you can for lack of a better word use as a point system uh for a totally heartless cold way to describe it of success why did you choose instagram followers as opposed to email list subscribers or money that you made every month or something else it's 
I don't know. It's it was just something measurable, like easy measurable. Um, like for the longest time, I had no idea about like uh, email subscribers. I I had a YouTube account before before that, like um like an old one, like that has maybe ten subscribers, uh, still to this date. And and just Instagram was something that I was doing. Like I was sharing pictures. It, it was easy enough to put like have output and get something back. Like this is kind of the the whole thing about social media is is you're doing work for free. And to to get a reward from that, it's either going to be money or it's going to be f subscribers and followers. Um, so that's why it's getting hard. Like when you're putting stuff out and it's not going to give you likes, it's not going to give you followers or subscribers, you're not going to get enough back to give you that momentum to go on. Um, and, and I think Ian and I both know a lot about this is like when you're not growing fast, like I had just like the, the last couple of weeks, it was so slow. It was almost down to going down to zero. And, and I was losing my mind because I wasn't motivated to put something out because I knew right now I, I'm not motivated. I don't have the energy to do something and, and not having that traction just slows you down. And when, when I see now that it's going back up again, like I, I see myself getting more motivated because I have something that comes back to me. Um, when you refer yeah. to it going up or being zero, you talking about followers increase. Yeah. And, and, but how, but, but, how does but, that feel? Because I think we've all been there and, it's kind of reassuring to hear that at your level you experience that too because I know particularly yeah. a lot of smaller people do my personal Instagram is still tiny because it's pretty fledgling and so I get really tied into this I can feel like bursts of momentum and I'm like oh so it, you know it's growing faster right? it picks up and then it flatlines because I can't devote as much time to it or whatever and then it's I just hate how your emotions are so tied to it like, do you, do you think that's a bad thing? Because to me, it feels horrible. Like, it literally me gives me anxiety. It's, it's like, oh, great. That's another metric <laughs> that I can literally tie my personality and my happiness to. Like, <laughs> it, it You kind of need to di differentiate it. I, I need to differentiate it as well. Like, I I personally always have to, to go back and tell myself, all right, my motivation comes from when flat lines, like this is when I have to work harder. This is when I have to put in more work. Like a lot of people get in and, and tell tell themselves like, oh, it's, it's the algorithm that has changed and I'm not getting views or they're changing something. And, and I'm the, like, I'm at the lower end. I'm like, they have the big leverage. I like, I, I have nothing to do with that. And, and so like, I'm the loser in this game. And this is totally wrong. Like this is kind of blaming yourself or blaming no actually shifting the blame from yourself to someone else um and and for me that has always been kind of the motivation is like all right you know what like if the algorithms has changed it means it's somewhere else or maybe there is like a um, time of the year where it's flat and there are like two three times in the year where instagram has always been lower in in growth what but are then, those times so I know people are going to be wondering that. Exactly. Yeah, I'm yeah. wondering that. Me, yeah, Us me too. Usually, it's 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 been the last uh, one or two months. Um, then it's always after uh, August, uh, July. It's it's like again September, a little bit of October, and and usually the months where it's pumping and and going well. It's it's um, uh, what when is it? It's December and and January. That's when it, it's really hot. Um, and in, um, like just after vacation time, after semester ends, uh, February is usually good as well. And I like, I could t show you the, the Instagram statistic from a year and pretty much. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. So, so, so you see kind of like the dips and that's, yeah. that's been yeah. like every year about the same, the same visual. Interesting. And it can, and can also be me. Like you cannot just apply that and you say like, oh, this is it. And so this is my answer. Yeah. Um, like if you would look at James Lewis's uh, thing, it would be like been up, 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 up uh, for the last six months. Yeah. And you um, know what? Um, I talked to him recently because we're doing a new show and he's like the first episode, which is cool. And he took complete ownership of it too. So he went, everyone's out there blaming the algorithm. And it just makes me want to figure out an angle that works. Yeah. And so I love that you guys have that in common because yeah. you, you don't benefit. If you're just like, mm, woe is me, the internet's against me. It's like, that's not going to help you. Like, it's the people that get creative and figure it out. And Absolutely. what does work that benefit. Yeah.
That's cool. Yeah, that's that's a, a really critical and and necessary uh, way to to take that in, in because I've seen I've seen other accounts like they've had a viral hit, they've blown up, and and then they've been at that peak, and then they've done the same thing over and over again till it died, and and then they didn't get the momentum to change it up again. Seb Lesser is is one of those example again. Um, like he he had a massive hit with that, but he got bored of doing what he did, um, and he wanted to change it all again. Like he started doing like more of these ornamental things, more of those drawings, which didn't fit with what he did before. Um, so he didn't he didn't morph his his channel well. Um, so he had a peak down. Um, so you, just so you know, I analyze a lot of people, um, <laughs> and and I go through it. Don't like. It's, it helps me to figure out kind of what, what is going on, how are they reacting to it, what is, like, I love to analyze things and, and, and figure out, like, how are they doing it, why is it not working, how can I take what is good from them and use it for myself, mm -hmm. and, and so on. And that has always helped me along the way. And so with Seb Lesser, it's, it's kind of been that, like, he's been at 1 million, 1 1.1, then down to 900, back to one with a couple of good viral hits and so on. And, and he's really good at, at hitting those viral hits and hitting them strong. But then he he flows back and, and is not consistent with his community. So so there, there are like great things about it. There are bad things about it. Um, you just need to figure out what works for you. And, and yeah, like in the end, like what do you get from it? What works because for if you, you then? Yeah. Um, you know, out for of the years and years and years that you've been doing this, what are some standout things where you're like, this worked for me and maybe it's applicable to the listeners, something they can they can follow too? So for me, it's always been like, what is my message that I want to share? So like, what is my content about? And, and narrowing it down. And it's always been for me, it's been inspiring and encouraging people. So this is kind of the content that like that I'm sharing has to be inspiring or has to be encouraging. Um, and sometimes can be like funny, kind of quirky, kind of me. That's kind of who I am. Um, so not, and the, underlined... not the generic. We've talked about this before, I think, with Lauren exactly. Hong, Like escape into the woods, like that yeah. kind of stuff. None of that. Like, You're saying like make it an extension Not of all your those who wonders are lost. Um, <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> kind of like... yeah, we're looking at you, oh, Ian. My favorite. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I, I've, never, I've never written that quote out, actually. Amazingly. No, I know. No, your stuff's awesome. <laughs> I might have written similar ones in the past. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I, I'm thinking like old school Ian because I'm sure I remember you doing like some of that stuff in preview graphics. But both you guys, I see your work as like an extension of your personality. Yeah, yeah, and I think you know, thing. and like like Stefan was saying at the beginning when there wasn't, you know, there wasn't much of this. I did the same with me. I didn't start, you know, we were on this sort of wave of lettering that we didn't know was a wave of lettering. I didn't even know about click feed before I started it. So, um, but then you, you, you're on it and like, you know, those quotes that were first rounds, like, you know, Stefan was doing some, we're using the app and I was doing it, you know, um, over the top of an image with my hand lettering. It, it was just, you know, there was some around and now it's on everything. And so you, the thing is you don't want to go where the mainstream is because that you just like get lost. You have to sort of be on the edge or somewhere Side near the it. edge of yeah. what you're doing. Um, and that's where the attention is on the edge. And sometimes, like, I go to the edge with, like, some of the stuff I do and some of the stuff that Stefan does with, like, you know, using, I know, tomato sauce or, uh, you know, like, we sometimes write in the snow or whatever it may be. It's not stuff that you would use in a actual job, per, per se, but it's it, it pushes out to the edge to get the attention then bring it in uh, for whether that's a project for Coca-Cola or whether it's someone coming to buy one of our Procreate packs, whatever it may be, you you need to push it to the edge to people to see you. So I you heard need someone some describe the sweet spot in terms of standing out with your business or marketing as somewhere between the middle of the road and completely insane. You know, like when you see completely insane stuff, you're like, this person is completely <laughs> off the rails, like, right? Yeah. yeah. But then like, there's that person that's crazy, but they just seem like maybe they know what's happening, like they have the answers. Yeah. So what you're saying is Stefan's kind of somewhere between like professional <laughs> Swiss banker and crackhead. <laughs> well, I don't Seems know if you've way. ever seen ever seen the guy who did like a surfer who did an interview on television and he's been like the 
the weirdest surfer guy. Um, it's been like a few years around and it's just been the most hilarious interview that people have done. But he, he played it like a fool to, to get the attention for his shop, for his surfing, because he said like, this is a one time in a life opportunity. Like somebody is interviewing me <laughs> in front of live television. So I'm going to do the That's weirdest amazing. thing ever. And it this. became a viral That's the one where he acted kind of like yeah. a dumb surfer, right? Like he acted yeah, like exactly, super yeah. like. It was just so gnarly, man. Like the waves. Is just... Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Best it, it, went, it went hugely viral. It, it was huge. Yeah. He, he, he I, no, I don't think he went on Ellen, but like that would be something today. He would be on Ellen yeah. right away. And just like, it just a hits like, like the, the um, yodel kid. Yeah. Yeah. The it just works. Kid. I love that. Um, so, I have a question. What's a banker doing? graphic design like how did that all i mean that just doesn't seem <laughs> it, it it's it sounds crazy but actually you, you have to think the other way around it's like what does a creative do in a banking job because before yeah. before i got into banking i actually did like a, a one year of art uh, art school um, yep. and wanted to become a graphic designer. I applied for a job as a graphic designer. Um, but like there were so many people applying for like um, a learning job that they just, they picked the other guy over me from 200 applicants. And like, like I was the last out of two. Um, and, and so when I didn't get that job, I just like, well, what is second, like what's my second option? It's like plan B is going into the bank. It's like getting a degree fast, um, having something in your pocket, like a safety net kind of, um, mm -hmm. you earn good money. It's, it's really good. Um, and I, after that, I even got into like a, a, um, like, uh, a specializing, uh, two, like two years of where I specialize in a certain area in the bank. Um, yeah. and moved to Zurich for that. And so that's kind of how that happened. But on the side, I was always doing creative stuff. Like I, at church, uh, at the church that I was here in Zurich, I led a creative team. Um, I had like videography, create like graphic design, podcasts, uh, social media, and all these kind of teams uh, that I was leading. And, and so that was kind of always like, like trying to think of campaigns to do kind of like how to get young people to come to a, a, a summer camp and like creating brochures, uh, big plans, big like stage design, everything. Like I, I had that. everything in that. And so that's kind of Amazing. like, like the creative was always in me. I was just in yeah. a banking job. And that's the best you know part you of love it, right? Where you just default yeah. to doing that. Yeah. Whether you're at yeah. church or with your friends, it's like you can't help yeah. yourself. And even at the banking job, like people will say like, well, like, how what what does the creative do at a banking job like i'm i'm actually really annoyed when people think of it like this because the truth is it's the same when part of your brain it's it's the same part of your brain you like yep. at, as soon as you get on to um doing a a creative like oh, or as soon as you encounter a problem you go at it with a creative mindset. Like you're like, how can I creatively solve this problem? And if you're a bank yeah. or if you're doing a graphic design job, like it doesn't change how you solve it. It's creatively. And so people at the bank were always saying like, man, you're like, you are creative. You're different than everyone else here. Um, because I was like, well, why don't you do it like this or like this? And they're like, well, I've never thought of it, of it like this. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that helped. The interesting thing for me working in a bank was uh like I didn't my my experience was completely different. I I went into banking because I was in music music and the arts and realized that everyone was broke. And my first like I thought, well, what's the place where you learn the most about business? And stupidly, I thought somehow banks would teach you the most about business, which actually <laughs> is not true at all. Um, but the, I I started working for a bank and getting a business degree because I thought I can figure out the music. And I need the business experience, um, which I don't know. I guess I worked out. I don't know if the <laughs> bank actually helped that much. But. I, I think I, I think it did. Well, like in my experience, I learned a lot from banking. I learned like a lot from working in, in a big office with big teams, um, like being on a structured day, having that like a lot of people would say like hey i like i want to switch to full time job and i thought of this as well like if i switch to to doing this full time like i'll have so much more time but that wasn't true i just like those 8 hours that i worked in a bank were like 
those are my eight unproductive hours that I have in my day right now. So like I started working in the morning, doing some emails, but then drift off and do other stuff. And then at six o'clock in the night, start becoming active again and working on some other stuff. And so it kind of has not, not changed. It's just I have more free time now to do other stuff. Mm. I love so it. So true. So you mentioned right now you're feeling a little bit creatively blocked. What is that like? Because I guarantee a lot of people looking at your feed are not thinking, this is a guy that's creatively blocked right now. Um, they probably yeah. think that never happens. So <laughs> I guess it's reassuring for me and all of us and everyone listening at home that it happens to all of us. Like, how does that play out in your head? I uh, like if you think it never happens and you're lying to yourself um if you feel like it only happens to you and to no one else you're lying to yourself as well but the thing is really creative blocks like for me they occur faster and faster they they shorten they tend to sh go shorter um uh, like the duration of the the block tends to shorten down but for me the way it feels is like i'm always trying to 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 achieve something like I have an image in my head of what I want to create and it's not formulated well this is why I can't actually create it so every time I sit down and I create something I feel like oh this is the worst thing ever that I've done and I should not share that I should not put it out and I'm like I'm bored myself about the things that I create and and so when you want to share something when you're like like I usually often overthink things so I, instead of just creating and just sharing it I'm like like ah oh, this I have this idea of doing this with this and uh, for example like I don't know like like I can do it with with my grids like the same thing with the same style again and it would be another post and it would be just another post out of a lot of other ones that I've done and kind of my style but nothing more uh, so there's nothing more interesting like I don't feel like it's giving value to people so I feel blocked and not one to create something more so I spend a lot of time like rethinking like how could I do it differently? How can I improve on that? And how can I find something new? And and that's where like I got inspired just yesterday by by Ian's post with the um with his 300 uh in chrome letters. I was just, like blown away by the style like seeing what he's doing and even experimenting with new things. It's like this is usually in that block time you start experimenting with new things. And, and usually when you come out, this is the beautiful thing about coming out of a creative block. You usually have found something new uh, that you're using in your work. And, and that new thing can be something like it's getting super popular. It's becoming something that, that uh, will be, become part of your portfolio of work that, you've, that you're doing. Like one of the new things that I've been doing a little bit by bits was like these big letters that are filled with like little icons and, and little pieces. And, and now I'm, I'm finding like during this creative block, I'm re realizing like this is perfect. Like this is a great opportunity for me and I have an idea how I want to use it um, to, to make money or, or to implement that. And so, so this is something that I'll build out in the future. Um, but I don't think I would have come to that conclusion if I wasn't completely thinking about it and like using my brain, like racking my brain trying to solve this problem and trying to get out of this situation that I'm in because your brain goes into a survival mode where it's like, all right, you feel like you're suffocating, like, let's get you out of there as fast as possible. Well, there's a pressure as well, right? Like you and Ian, you're so prolific, often posting every single day. And it's like quite a complex piece. And it's, to be honest, the consistency is pretty staggering to me. And the way I think about it is how I play guitar which is not very well. So I, um, <laughs> I, I play guitar, like I, I learned guitar and I learned a few songs and years and years have gone by where it's like, I'll keep playing the same riffs and I'll stay in my comfort zone. And so I won't evolve as a guitar player and I'll annoy the hell out of my girlfriend by just playing the same songs at home. But you guys seem to always be moving the bar and evolving your style and getting better and better. How do you do that creatively? Like, I mean, you mentioned you got Where'd inspired you there the by, time? yeah, like you got inspired <laughs> by something you saw on Ian's profile, but like, how are you constantly just like evolving into new stuff that you never could have foreseen and doing that so consistently? I wish I knew. I wish I, like, if there was a, like a, a secret recipe for that is, is like, that, that would be great. But 
sometimes it happens when Ian and I are just like chatting through things like the the whole Game of Thrones and and um Avengers thing that that came from Ian like he was he was like coming from like hey let's let's do logos with like let's do the Netflix logo with uh with the letter builder like it it works perfectly and we're like yeah actually it does. does work perfectly yeah. and and of course it will be a success because come on it's a logo we're using our tool like it's it's also a, like it sells products as well that's that's a great thing about it as well it's like for us it kills two birds with one stone um we have something that goes out usually it's it, it has some viral potential in it plus it, it helps us sell our products that we create because because now we can create a challenge around this exact same same thing it's how can other people use that grids to to create their logos or recreate their favorite logos and stuff like that um do and, you find and so, like trying to reverse engineer it uh hinders your creativity or helps it because i think some people might feel a bit limited where it's like well if i go and look statistic you, you're quite analytical right but i know if i went and tried to like statistically look at what was trending and working and almost try and reverse engineer a chance of virality i would struggle to then get creative but you somehow fuse both it seems well it depends on how you look at it like i if if you take the example of Game of Thrones, I don't I don't feel like this is something creative to do, like uh, redrawing a logo that already exists. Um, not necessarily creative, yeah. Um, but it's entertaining um, and it's inspiring. So again, it hits my marks of like it's it's text and it's entertaining, inspiring. Cool. Um, so so that 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 fulfills that gap. For me, it's not it's not challenging because. To be to be fully honest, and this is the honest designer podcast. Um, <laughs> mm -hmm. Now, to be fully honest, if you look at it, if you look at my drawings close up, like you'd see, like, "Ooh, this is this is not great." Like, I look at it, I'm like, "Like, it looks great on a video. I would not post a photo about it." So, so there's a difference. Um, and what? what? <laughs> I was going to say, I have to agree with you. That's why. That's why I like doing videos because I can be a bit more rough and ready. <laughs> if yeah. it's you know you you, you you can get away with a lot more in a video. So if you if you well, feel your aren't stuff zooming in and that kind of thing, or sorry, because people aren't able to zoom in in the same way, or what? Yeah, no, I think they can, that, but the quality of a still is much better than the quality of video. Yeah, mm -hmm. maybe just an Instagram thing. Um, yeah. but because it's going quickly and you only see it for a few seconds at the end, yeah, you haven't your brain hasn't got time to see where the, all the errors are. Whereas if you post a still, you know, people have time to look at it and see that this isn't Analyze quite right. It. Yeah, yeah, so you're talking so about for like me, they could zoom in on the, how you filled something in, or like on the exact whatever yeah. of something well, you start the, to see everything because it's obviously like my, still my, well done. But it's yeah. just it it the the thing is like it looks close enough, but it's like it's 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 like looking at a pixelated image of something. You're like you're not sure to tell that the line is straight, that like everything is is well done, because mm. it, and that's not the point of the the post. And again, it's like it's more about. Um, the feeling you get from watching it that is the point it's like this amazement of like oh, wow he he just drew the whole logo uh from this and this and this and he did and it looks so simple because like a time lapse again it has the, the effect of wow it just looks so easy <laughs> i can do it how, how, and, how long does it take like that piece for example it took 30 minutes in, in total uh, to okay, draw. That, that's but, still but again, ridiculous. That's still I, pretty fast. I could spend 30 days and it would just look <laughs> abysmal. <laughs> I, I, I tell you, the, the way at that quality and level of drawing, I would say like it's it's like I didn't redraw it. Like, like I would use to like if I did client job, I would work so much longer on it. Mm -hmm. um, like I work fast, but at the same time, I still like like if I'm not recording myself, I'll go into the details. I'll zoom in. I'll I'll make it fine. I'll brush it out, um, like just for myself. Yeah. But I wouldn't do it for for a video that I'm just I'm no I'm just gonna post it online. Like I'm not gonna like if somebody asks for wallpaper. I'm like no, you're not gonna get any of that. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> looking at it now. It's crazy good. People I love the process. That's what that's why well, that's thing. Yeah. Uh, I encourage people not to post an actual video of them doing it with their hand rather than like a time lapse that you can export from procreate because people love seeing you 
or mainly just my hand, but people love seeing people construct something from nothing to the finished thing. I mean, that could be like, you know, it might be you just using a pencil or, you know, you using some paint. You may be, you know, constructing some origami with a bit of paper. People love seeing the sort of process. And it's the same for any industry. You know, you take the sport, like the fitness one, you know, you love seeing the process. You know, you show you a before and after of uh, someone who's, you know, overweight and now they've got a six pack. You know, that's fine. But they they want to see that transformation in that video of, you know, them going to the gym and, you know, all those photos as it gets thinner and thinner. And that's what they really appreciate, the sort of process that went into it. I agree because I'm looking and uh, I'm not drawn to to lettering particularly, but like I'm looking at the Game of Thrones post and I almost clicked on it, except for I was afraid it was going to make sound if I clicked on it. But (laughs) even not done, not done. Like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like afraid it was gonna come into the microphone, so I didn't click on it. But I was drawn to it in the same way that I'd be drawn to like um do they have over there like um how it's made? It's like a television show and it will show how uh yeah. I don't know, like how anything's made, like how mm. shoes are made or something. Mm. You're just like, Well, yeah. how I like I'm I'm not super into lettering, but I'm like looking at that, I'm like But how yeah. did he do it though, nonetheless? <laughs> did you see the eighteen rated see episode that. on children? That was in a <laughs> and I'm making children. <laughs> no, sorry, no, send Dad me the Dad. link. Um, so, so yeah, <laughs> Stefan. Um, I know right now is it is it launched? You've done a course on how to grow Instagram. Yeah, yeah. We've so, done a course on social media. Yeah, which is awesome, and we can plug that up at the end. Um, obviously, I don't want you to give away the whole course, and I'm sure you couldn't in this time. But for this is mainly for me, to be honest. I selfishly want to know. Um, But definitely for all of us, for all the listeners who are like struggling to grow their Instagram, could you almost like bullet point, like what are some key things people should be focused on? Um, So key things that are interesting that you wouldn't think about is, is one is creates like create content that brings value. Um, Because the same way you ask selfishly, like, give me something. Like, this is why you want to listen to what I'm going to be saying, because I'm, I'm going to give you value. Um, and, and you show that too. So even for, for Dustin, for Lisa, for, for Ian, for, for every one of us, it's, it's like asking ourselves is like, how can I give value to you? Who's giving something like, if I'm, uh, if I have products, like how you use my products, like I'm going to make an account of how you use my products and I'm going to show the best things, or I'm going to promote other people. So I'm giving other people value by sh- like placing them on my account and sharing them. Um, for you, uh, Tom with, with design cuts is like, sharing like promoting the best products on your instagram and then showing the beautiful work that people create with that and tutorials and everything like you create value and that will again people will always react something because it's something you get for free um that you can just subscribe and you want to see more and as long as you're getting that value people will stay subscribed um but that is to keep people i i totally understand that with products or education but whenever I try and tell my followers, you know, it's all about bringing value and um, they often struggle. Well, how do I do that as an illustrator, digital illustrator or as a letterer? For what, what so value let's, am, am let's, let's, let's say people? for for an illustrator. Um, so you're you're designing something you're like you're either taking a stand on a topic. You are either uh, wanting to tell a story with your drawing um abstract sundays for example is an amazing illustrator who who brings the fun out of random daily objects and like adds like starts drawing on top of that and like that's like the value you're giving someone is is a laughter it's like the surprise of like oh i didn't like i've never seen something like this and so um paper boy um he he does like cutouts of of paper and then places them in like landscapes and so kind of mixes landscape with this paper thing um so he had the o2 uh in london with um i think it was uh it was captain america like the the o2 the outside with those sticks uh sticking out was kind of like uh, captain america's shield and so his caption on top of his instagram is 
uh, come see the world with me differently or, or something like that. Yeah. Um, and that's the value you're giving is like, follow my account, like follow my work and let's look at the world in diff- like in a different way. Um, so he takes them on a journey. You give them value by like always turning the thing around. And, and that challenge the viewer that will be like, he'll go outside and he's like, what could that be? Like if he had to do something like, what could that be? I could do that too. And, yeah. and so you're giving them value in that sense. So I guess um, that's why it's so important to develop a unique style, which is something we've talked about a lot on this show, because otherwise it won't be that different perception of the world or that thing that makes you go oh that's different and interesting and and unique so is that pretty vital would you argue or if you're like if you're out there doing illustrations of the same stuff everyone else is or the same kind of lettering is it going to be pretty hard to pull that off the value piece like the value piece doesn't have to be necessarily very different from anyone else's like if you want to stand out as a designer i think yes you have to have your own unique style and you'll develop it automatically the longer you you work on it um like I, I didn't, I didn't hone in on on really working on my style and and developing that that I'm different from anyone else's. I feel like I've copied from everyone. Like I've I've used elements from here and there and uh, like even from Ian. Like just taking things out and seeing like where where does that fit into what I do? Like what do I like about his things that I can like take like a puzzle piece? I feel like oh this could fit with me as well, and like take that away. Um, but with value, it's like, is finding the approach you want to take? Like, do I want to help people? Like my approach in giving value is inspiring, encouraging people. Like I know that words have a, a lot of power and, and using words in a positive way by, by using them to encourage others, to help them, to motivate them. Like, like I'm not always motivated, but if I can tell people like, Hey, you know what, this is a bad day for me, but let's, let's look at the bright side there are so many things we can be grateful for. And I do a post about being grateful. Then this is something that I use, like I use my art to send that message. And I think every one of us, the the better your, your art becomes like the more a message you have behind what you do. Like Banksy has a super strong message. Like he, he fights, um, he fights this, this whole battle of, of, of capitalism and, and uh, politics and everything. And just like, puts it in, in an image that that just will speak for itself. Um, and so that's the value he brings. Um, and and depending on what you do, that's kind of how you how you can bring value to people. So would it be fair to say that value could be also, because I'm looking at the Paperboy, um, Paperboy's account. I've never seen yeah. this before. Um, to me, when I, I, kept thinking, I kept asking myself, what's the value in this? What's the value in this? And then when I looked at it, I thought, oh, the value is that it's free entertainment. Um, I mean, there are messages, but um, but when I first look at it, I just think, oh, this is this is actually quite entertaining because it's so different. So, yeah. would it, is it fair to say that that anything you'd exchange money for, just like you'd go to a movie, equals value? So, if it's entertaining, that's value. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, th- I don't if, think people. I think people can get stuck behind value being a certain commodity of like, you know, like teaching them how to do. Um, something yeah you know, when value is so to... nebulous that yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to pin it down to you something. pay for netflix and you expect entertainment and it's that sort of thing you expect some quality programming i suppose and that's what people yeah. you know entertainment like you know a lot of youtubers are just entertainment there's no like teaching involved it's just that people find value in enjoying the watch i suppose mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like like logan logan paul is like he said he told himself like he wants to be the biggest entertainer and and one of the things that he provides is like taking a relief out of your 24 hours and like giving you 15 minutes where you're not about to think about your day or like you can de-stress a little bit and and i think the best way to look at value is saying like would you be willing to pay one dollar to follow this account like turn that around to yourself and ask the question like why would somebody give me one dollar every month to just be able to access my account? That's would people do, give it idea. or not? And if and if you feel like you're giving enough value for that, then yes, you are. Um, and like if you're saying like, man, my my stuff that I put out should be like people should be paying me ten bucks a month. Like you got to know what that means actually. Like in an era of Netflix, ten yeah. bucks is 
is billions of dollars that people pour into to make that work. Like that's kind of the the, the way I see it. So one one dollar is already a lot of money. I love that perspective because that that's so easy to to ask that question. It's like such a quick um, for the cliche litmus test of just yeah, it's like a it, measure. Yeah, you can yeah. very quickly ask yourself that. Or, or in a similar vein, I remember someone, uh, I think it was a copywriter saying, never forget the, the person that's wa- looking at your work is most likely sitting by themselves, bored in front of a computer. Um, mm. So <laughs> act accordingly. And, and, so, and, yeah. amazing. Then, okay, would it be fair to say then that, that you should rather focus on the content rather than the volume? Because that's where I get stuck. I, I I have this like I look at you guys and you you like pumping it and every day you're posting something and it's amazing content and the first thing I think of is how the hell are you doing it because where are you finding the time? Um and I just either I'm doing something wrong, like I don't have a process that you have that you're able to actually produce things so much and so prolifically, or maybe I'm putting too much energy in the wrong direction but all uh, what i'm saying is like uh, is it would it be okay to rather say post four times a week but make them really good and yeah i don't know i'm like like there's this thing of like you got to post every day and it's overwhelmed and it's just not yeah yeah the 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 every day i i feel like i have to post every day it's it's still with me even though i i haven't i haven't done that for For, for the last, I think for the last um, 18 months, I haven't posted regularly, like, like even five times a week would be too much. Like I post maybe two or three times a week and then really? often really? do, do a see, repost. I, I see so much of your work. I thought you were doing it daily. I can hug you right now. Seriously. Like you've like <laughs> just made me feel so much better. Um, but one thing that I oh, wanted to God. say is like, and I feel like. I, I don't know much about you, Lisa, but still, uh, I know from Ian and I, we both started out on Instagram and and we kind of built that Instagram thing. And for me, like for me, Instagram is kind of my day job. Like I spend my day figuring out what will I post on Instagram because kind of this uh, is okay. the output that I have to have at, on, on a day. And then everything else that comes in is is what I do on the side. So every project, mm-hmm. every product I sell, everything okay. else is kind of on the side. So if you think about that, like a lot of people are doing like their full-time job, like nine to five and and try and do that. And then on the side, we'll try like, oh man, how can I, like, I don't have the energy left to to create a post or create something. And for us, I feel like for me, definitely for me, it is, it's re- reversed. It's like, I spend my day trying to focus on what can I share on Instagram and luckily you're at this uh, now that I'm back in Switzerland it's like the the best time to post is around uh, two or three o'clock in in the afternoon here in my time like I'm just uh, one hour be uh, before you guys in in the UK and so that's kind of when I need to post something so that's kind of my deadline after th- everything else in the afternoon it's like it's free time that I can use for projects or for things that I feel like it's not urgent, but I have like, I want to work on it. Like the newsletter that I've been working with Tom. Um, that's, that's like, um, there are a couple of things like that, that I do. That's cool. And yeah. that is okay. so refreshing to hear. It is. Cause I get oh. really tied up in the like, Oh no, my post didn't do well. I feel terrible. But this is my side hustle, which, like you say, I'm worn out from my job. I have no time for. Same thing for Lisa. Lisa, imagine if you had eight hours a day or what, six hours, whatever it is, purely devoted to Instagram, figuring out wow. that platform, <laughs> looking at the data, producing content yeah. for it. Like, I'm sure you'd be killing it on that platform even more than mm. you already are. For sure. I mean, I look at Ian's and I, I've always thought Ian was a professional Instagram person for at least Absolutely. a year of his life. I mean, every time yeah. we talk, it was Instagram. <laughs> it was clear that like 80% of his time was devoted to just grinding away at Instagram. And then he, and then you went and you like devoted time to just grinding away at YouTube. Um, and you can see the result. Like you can see that the energy was devoted there by the results. But mm-hmm. yeah. In, input, output. Um, when I started... I, um, cause there has to be a sacrifice because we've limited by the amount of time and, Absolutely. um, uh, like I've got two young kids. So I we, you know, it sort of limits it even more cause I don't want to sacrifice, you know, 
work doesn't come before them. So, but when I first started on Instagram, I was sacrificing paid work, as in I was leaving all that, you know, I was doing what um, Stefan just mentioned. I was focusing on Instagram and YouTube more than I was focusing on, I've got a website to do, or I had, you know, some branding stuff to do. And I get behind on that, but for some reason, I, I thought, I, you know, I couldn't see where it was going to go, but I thought if I do, I was in one, I was enjoying it. You have to enjoy it. Um, mm. Otherwise, it is a real struggle. Um, but the second thing was that um, uh, because I focused on that sacrifice, maybe money and maybe time on um, it, that I'm now, it feels like I'm reaping the rewards of having to put in those years and years where I didn't earn anything. Or like it took me, you know, three, four years before I got anything through it doing Instagram. And I'm still Which only that, getting a small bit. That takes some serious faith. I think faith is honestly the word. So Stefan, I'd I'd love to get inside your head, like early stage, Stefan Coons, even younger than you are now, right? Like, what did that look like? What did that feel like where it's just going on faith? You're plugging away. You're putting in all this work. Like your friends want to go out with you. You got other commitments in life, and you're like, I got to put the time in, but you're not really seeing any return on that. Well, the thing was that I like I didn't quit my my job at the bank just to pursue Instagram and pursue that. Like I I wanted to become first. I wanted to become a wedding photographer. Then it was like opening a coffee shop, and and they're like completely different things that I wanted to do before. Like I. I, I always tell that story like lettering was my my best friend and I never saw her as as the partner the person that I wanted to marry <laughs> I like, like we're, we're just we're just great friends and everyone else is like no you guys are like matchmaking in heaven um <laughs> that's awesome and and so for me it was like only when I realized like when it was early 2017 when I saw like I had a book uh, that was coming out where I was the author about lettering. Um, I had online courses that were like in the works. I had, um, I think I just had reached a hundred thousand. I had, um, I think a, a project coming up with Adobe, whereas like I was invited to go to Barcelona to the OFFF conference festival thing. Um, and so I had so many things coming in. I was just like, man, I really should give that a shot. And, and I, I didn't think actually I would make it that far. So when I quit my job, like I had money on the side, but I didn't really completely plan it out. Like I quit at the end of the, the year and like the wedding season was over and I had like a whole, whole couple of months left of doing nothing. And so I invested that time into doing a hundred day creative challenge and like doing one thing every day and sharing that on Instagram. And because my, my following was still small, I didn't have a problem like, it matched the, the, the output that I was putting out match with the, the time that I was putting in. Um, and, and so I was just working on that and I, like, I didn't know where it was going. Um, just like investment, but right now looking back, I, I have to say like, man, that was kind of the best investment. Like I, like I worked so much on my branding, which again, returned into me getting higher paid jobs than I could have ever imagined. Uh, just because I can say like, well, you want me, you don't want anyone else. Right. And, and then you can play with that mm. while every other designer has to fight for like, well, if they're not going to pick me, they can just pick someone else. Like, so yeah. I got to work on my price. So that's the only differentiating part. Um, and, and so that has worked really well for me. And, and right now, like one of the next step that I'm doing, is like, I want to hire a videographer and film editor to start up my my YouTube because I want to invest in YouTube. And suddenly now this whole investing into something suddenly costs a lot of money. It's not just my time that I have to put in, but suddenly costs me a lot of money. And like, I want to plan, like I want to pay this guy for a whole year um, to make this work. Like I, like I want to see if it works in a year or not, then either I'm dropping it or doing it. But but then you see like suddenly investing into something like that suddenly becomes a whole lot different and like is is branding so much like is it worth so much to you or not? And then you can see like, oh, well, we'll see. <laughs> it's a long game building a brand. And I feel you because, you know, I'm doing my personal brand bit on the side of, of my company. I'm investing in a videographer, like content people. It's all part time, but it really adds up like it's not that cheap. 
and earning no money from it and not planning to charge for anything for years. So it's going on blind faith that this compound interest thing is going to kick in one day in the future. And like there are yeah. days where you're racked with self-doubt of like, is it all worth it? Am I just like throwing my money up the wall? Do you do you feel like that? Or are you like pretty damn confident it's going to... I've No, because see, the, the thing with YouTube, I've been thinking about starting up with YouTube again. Like like reaching 30,000 was super easy. Like I, I, I don't know how it happened. It went really fast, but then I didn't have the time to put in. And so since then, I've been really racking my brain around that and it's been like six months where i've been going back and forth like should i hire someone should i not hire someone should i really invest like i i'm i'm just gonna say a number but like 60 grand um like euros like to to put into that like equipment person like to hire someone like are you really ready to invest that much money to hire someone to make that happen without knowing, like, I don't know what kind of jobs I'm getting in the future. Like, I don't know how our products are going to sell in the future. Um, It's like, there's a lot of uncertainty, but at the same time, what I do know, and, but it's, it's not kicking in right now. It's like the survival thing where it's like, well, now I got to make that much money, like every month, like right now I'm, I'm, I'm floating. I'm cozy. It's, it's like easy. Um, Yeah. But at the same time, it's like, you're not sure that you're going to get this money back and and it's going to work out really well. So cool. So I guess maybe you are you saying you have some of the doubts but this lights a fire under oh. you so you just channel that into like motivation. Well, it's it's suddenly like whatever decision you have to do like it shouldn't be the decision of like well like I'm not sure. Like you, ha- I always say like I need to have peace with the the decision that I make. If I have peace with it, then it's a good decision. Otherwise, I'm not gonna go where I'm like uncertain. There are things that are gonna challenge me, but if I can still find some peace in it, then I'm happy with that. Um, and I need to follow that uh, in whatever I do. Amazing. So, um, we kind of went like deep on that last point but for any Mm -hmm. creatives out there and not just instagram but creatives who are trying to build an audience around their work which is something you're clearly very talented at bring in value totally agree that's like a a fundamental pillar of that what are like a couple of other huge things people should be focused on um it's it's knowing that it, like if you know what what goes viral the even even if you know the key things like i know I kind of know exactly what I need to do. doesn't mean that I'm going to be doing it right every time. It doesn't mean that my content I'm going to put out will work every time. Um, but I need to know kind of like, all right, video is going to be a hit. So how do I create video that people want to watch that are entertaining for people to watch, are satisfying, are, are informative, are like you learn something? Um, so what are those key elements? And then like you got to go through Instagram and like figure out like, all right, what like what works for me kind of finding new ways of of say looking at something like talking taking the the point of illustration um uh, like a lot of people say like well like i don't make videos like i don't animate it my my illustration but then you're like but you draw them so you can record how you draw them you can like just set up a camera and like like screen record whatever you do like put an iphone uh, on on a tripod or anything just do it um and and find the ways how you can maximize the content you're putting out like if you're creating a video then maybe if it's good enough then you also have a post then maybe you can do a image um like those collages those uh carousels um i saw something like on 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 an instagram account called later like where they just um a little bit shifted those picture of a carousel um and so there's a little white line so you know that there's another picture coming but you know that every picture is standalone. Mm-hmm. So I thought like, oh, Instagram has created a new feature. Till I, I realized, no, wait, they just made it differently. So on the last collage that I made, I tried the same same trick. I just like, well, will this work better? And so suddenly like every picture you go in and you see, um, like if you look at here, you see that little line yeah, on the yeah, side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, that's that's smart. And and see this this is kind of the things like it's it's trial and error it's making making those those assumptions and and uh, hypotheses and just trying seeing like is is my my thesis right am i wrong um like the game of thrones right now it's like it's it's behaving the way i expected it to behave 
and I hope that in the next days, like the it will the explore feature will kick in where it's gonna be be shared with a lot of accounts that haven't followed me, and that will get me a lot of followers. Okay, for example, so, the yeah. Sorry, go ahead. The the Avenger uh, post, for example, I gained over a thousand new followers from that one post. Um, so so that was kind of what I expected it to. It reacted that way. And it's like, like, you can always tell yourself, like, why did I not do it before? But like, at the same time, like, you still have to do the work, you still have to try it out. And one person asked me about like, like, you, you're you saying, like, get your people and like, engage your community by asking questions. And I'm asking questions, but nobody's responding to it. And I'm like, well, try different questions, try like find out what question they want to answer, make it relatable to to the content you're posting that people want to 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 say something like to encourage like who, comments and that kind of exactly thing. like who's your favorite Avenger and like get people to 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 talk about that or or things like that. But it has to like you have to figure it out over time and you'll figure it out over time. But um, great example was Karen um, who who's like at iPad lettering. Like oh, yeah. I, I, I said, yeah. sat down with her um, for lunch and I, I told her all the things that I was doing and I told her, like I showed her what was working, what was not working. Um, I, I told her what she could do and all that stuff. And then she she went back, took her a couple of, of months to, to, to like work it out. But then suddenly, boom, it exploded. She had a massive growth on Instagram <laughs> and like like over 100,000 in, in a, cu a couple of months, like crazy. Jeez. And so I guess to distill down what you're saying is just be a real practitioner of the platform, learn its nuances, learn what works, stop waiting for a happy accident for your content to blow up, actually try and engineer it as much as you can. Um, I mean, this is like a really lame example, but you know, the kind of clickbaity videos on Instagram where it'll be like a really compelling thumbnail with like a red circle drawn around part of it. And you're like, what is that? And even though it looks like a crap piece of content, you click on it still. <laughs> is, is that, but done in like an artistic, actually like decent way instead of being super clickbaity. But it's it's just understanding what grabs people's attention, what gets shared. Yeah. So, kind of so, so cl clickbait is basically that. It's, it's like getting people to open the video the, the same way like YouTube has created its own formula of how you have to create a YouTube video. Like you have to put the five, 10 uh, best seconds at the beginning, putting an intro after, inviting people to watch. And at the end, you need to have that. Um, if you want to convert viewers, new viewers uh, to subscribers, like you have to remind them, like you cannot just like expect people to, to sign up and do that. Like people will if the content is amazing, but if the content is, is good, then people still need to be reminded like, hey, subscribe to this channel. If you love this video, blah, blah, you will help help and support this uh, by blah, blah. Like you can see all the videos, like you can give all these answers, but you kind of need to to figure out that formula. And, and Instagram has formulas, uh, YouTube has formulas, every platform has a formula and how it works. Mm -hmm. And that's why we we talk about in our in our class, it's it's about having a strategy for your social media, because if you're doing it blind, if you're just trying it out and just seeing like, ah, oh, does that work or not? Like you're playing it by luck and luck doesn't really work every time. Yeah. Um, and I've, and I've seen like a lot of other people doing like, they've been really well, like doing really good, but they didn't really understand what they were doing really right. And, and from my, like, it's, it's, it's tough to say, like, I know exactly what they did, but I wouldn't say I know exactly, but I, I understand like human behavior and, and, and entertainment content development and all that. It's like for brands, it's the same thing. Like if, if Nike tells me like, well, we have 80 million, um, subscribe, like followers on Instagram. I'm like, this is great, but it's not really that great because you have over a billion customers or people seeing like on, on, um, during the world cup, like imagine how many people see Nike logo, like a lot of more people should be should be uh, following you on, on on Instagram. So like you have the biggest budget. I, I love it. It's just being immersed in it, right? Um, yeah. The same way, Dustin, you go and regularly look at what people are doing with email marketing and you pull out bits that you like and you apply it to your own and that's why you're fantastic at email marketing. It's like yeah. anything, but I guess my... It, it all kind of applies, right? Like um, the call to action type thing. I mean, email marketing is essentially direct mail marketing through you know snail mail but transferred onto an electronic platform 
But then even like you were saying with um, having to ask for subscribers, um, to people subscribe to your YouTube channel, um, that, you know, just that's the same thing you have to do for email. You have to say, you know, sign up for my email and here's why uh, people can't read your mind. They don't know you want them to subscribe to your channel unless you tell them you want them to subscribe to your channel. They, um, they don't might not even know that you have a newsletter or like, like I didn't know that Dustin has like the most amazing email newsletter like now i want to subscribe to that because because i like this this will help me or like and again we have the same same thing again like value you're bringing value to people through your newsletter if you're not bringing value to people people will unsubscribe as fast as they subscribe to it and and the same way you have to figure out like all right am i giving them free stuff like would be people willing to pay one bucks to get my emails like if you get to that point yeah, man, like that would be that's a great amazing. business model <laughs> I actually know some people that have premium uh, newsletter subscriptions. Yeah. I okay, say, so I, I, I can already hear like the, um, I don't know, the objections. And I hate when people are filled with excuses. I think it's a losing mindset. But equally, it's like, okay, this all sounds great, but you are doing this full time, Stefan. And I've got my humble little, like, I don't know, let's say illustration Instagram. And I don't have time to be reverse engineering and doing, you know, tracking what everyone's doing and all that kind of stuff. I have very limited time. So how do I manage to do a better job? Yeah, that's me. You literally just asked what my situation that's is. Me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm me. Well, the, the first thing is like, I'm in that online course, I'm really sharing about everything that I know, like pretty much everything that I know um, about social media. And I, like, I shared that about a year ago. We recorded that about a year ago and I've grown over a hundred thousand or 120,000 in, in the past year. So those things apply and still apply. Like I haven't really changed the strategy. It all works still the same. Um, so definitely learning those key elements and then taking the time, like figuring out, all right, like content wise, um, like I get inspired by watching late night shows, uh, YouTube channels or television series. Like how do they plan their content? How like James Corden is one of the best examples at the moment with creative content that gets people excited to watch the show. Like carpool karaoke. He has segments of like carpool karaoke, fill your guts or spill your guts. Like the show where you're, you're getting interesting questions. If they're not going to answer, at least they'll eat something really disgusting and and it's it just revolves around that and so it's it's so hilarious um he has other shows like other segments that just fills that up if you think about that like ian ian has kind of like the segment where he's like drawing with with um fruit and vegetables that could be one segment that he fills up and he posts about that like every two or three weeks um something like that then he has another segment um that would be like um drawing now with new brushes like those balloon lettering uh 3d chrome like playing around with texture with with new new stuff uh that could be one the next one would be um like creating something with the grids builder where you create like a whole composition and you fill something out and and all these kind of things those could be like mm -hmm. all segments so it's like a can content use. calendar exactly content and then calendar, yeah. and then be also be really predictable like I wish I could be more predictable. I'm just too, too much of a loose cannon in that sense where I'm like, I just post whenever I feel like it, like I cannot wait to share something. So like the Game of Thrones, my friend told me like, wait, wait to share that, wait till the show comes up and then you share that when like, like on, on Sunday evening or Monday when the show comes out. And I'm like, man, I cannot wait. I just want to share it. Um, but if you have like a strict calendar, like you say, just like every Monday, I'm, I'm sharing something every Monday then people start to get that trigger like the series you know that game of thrones comes out on sunday nights um you know that this comes out then and then and and all that helps you to to kind of help people align with what you do and so that is like learning from from television that has been doing this for 70 60 years uh, at least like creating those regular piece of segment because that's the only way that you will get people to watch the news on a regular basis that will go on YouTube to see like, oh, Ian Barnard, has he put out a video now on Tuesday um, that he was supposed to like, because like Casey Neistat was the same thing. Like I woke up every morning at eight o'clock in the morning and I was like, there's a new video out and I'm going to watch it. <laughs> that reminds and, and me of, oh, sorry. I was going to say it reminds me of um, like 
um, like news does it on a very hyper schedule. So, you know, they always talk about the, the 24 hour news cycle. When you turn on whatever your favorite news channel is and it's like the same thing, they just insert whatever the thing is of the day and then they just grind it out. This guest goes on this show. This guest goes on this show day in and day out. It's just this uh, hyperactive content calendar, I guess you would say, of but the this, same thing. It, yeah. And and this this is great. This is a great example. Again, like you, you have to remind yourself, like, why are they doing that? Because the hyper thing keeps you on the edge of like, I want to see the next thing. I, like, I need to see that. Like series is the same thing. Like, you know exactly how an episode is built. The beginning is strong. The middle is going to be pretty weak. Usually maybe it has a peak, but the end is going to be so interesting that when it stops, you're just like, Mm-hmm. what yeah. is happening next <laughs> and and, and and the same thing you have to kind of apply to what you're doing like even like if you can like create a YouTube video and at the end bring in what's coming on on the next episode because then you're like whoa I want to see that mm-hmm. and and so you're waiting all day long for the next episode so creating it's like that a soap expectancy opera. next exactly. time <laughs> on but it works. Lee. it works it works and even on, on your newsletters like teasing something like trying the apple route of like you won't believe what's coming out next week like this yeah. is like preparing for the events for for the, of the century and making it like this is you're, you're not gonna want to miss it like that tells you don't unsubscribe my my newsletter because you want to get that there's a guy that does copywriting for email and he actually calls it the sos sequence which stands for soap opera sequence and um, he, he really? talks about literally thinking of soap operas and then he talks about, he calls them loops and he'll talk about nesting multiple open loops. So you open one loop and say, hey, I made uh, a, a million dollars last year doing this, but I'll get to that uh, later. And then you go yeah. into the next part of the email and then you're like, I, I do this and that and that and that. I'll little, tell you a little bit more about that in the next email. And then you finish up the f- part from the beginning. So then they got through it. And so these loops keep nesting and yeah. making people just keep yeah. picking little breadcrumbs <laughs> it's it's and 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 again that like this is those are the elements you have to pick out of what you see like when you read something like if you're curious enough to like look into these things and seeing like oh this is interesting i like how he does that or like like you look at a post on instagram you're like oh i actually enjoyed that like ask yourself why do you enjoy that ask yourself like again with that loop like why did I just finish reading that whole email and I didn't stop? And then you're like, ah, oh, he opened those loops. And YouTube videos is the same thing. I'll tell you, you what it is. It's like being an active listener instead of in a mm-hmm. conversation, just nodding along. It's mm-hmm. actually consuming content and what other people are doing with purpose and awareness. Mm-hmm. Just tuning in. Like you say, what do I like about that? Why is that yeah. working? I think that's such a big tip for people. Um, mm-hmm. Stefan, have you got like five minutes? I know we're slightly oh, long I'm, on time. I'm, no, no, I'm not nervous or I'm not on time crunch. <laughs> Appreciate it. Um, mm. So I'm a huge believer that it is not how many people are following you. It's ultimately how much they care and engage with your content. So yes, like having this huge audience definitely helps massively. Um, but equally, I see your engagement is through the roof. You've got some very loyal fans, a lot of people supporting what you're doing. You're not one of these hollow accounts, as I call them, where they got a million followers, but like, you know, it it was built on this clickbait crap and and no one really cares if they went away tomorrow. So beyond just bringing value, have you got any tips for, um, you know, just how to get people really engaged around your work and what you're doing? I feel like it's... It's the question is what type of work do you bring? Like, um, if we look at like accounts that like the engagement drops and drops and drops and drops is, is, is the life cycle of how long do you keep a subscriber interested in your work? Um, and, and one of those example is, is like, uh, we were talking about, uh, value, like somebody, somebody who posts like pictures of him on on this on the beach in bali uh doing like the most beautiful things luxury stuff like you're actually not getting value out of it because you're just watching beautiful things and you, at the end you're asking yourself why did i really like like i didn't get anything out of that except that i feel more empty than before <laughs> um and so you realize that after like 12 months or maybe eight months, you realize that, you know what, I'm going to stop following them because they start to annoy me. Um, and, and that is a massive problem. So 
this is why you have to figure out like how can I keep those people engaged by by growing by like taking them on a journey taking on them on a journey is kind of the best thing is like like I'm going to share what I'm creating I'm going to share what I'm becoming as an artist like like one thing that I want to do on on my YouTube is like at the moment is it's the big topic for me it's I don't know what I want and and I love somebody said like something like this like um I don't know what I want to do but I tell you this it's not going to be boring and so you take them on this journey of like where, where you guide them through and so this is kind of what I want to do on on YouTube is is one of course it's talking about what I do creatively what I do like all this stuff and and give them value but at the same time is like you know what I'm I'm a designer I've I feel like I've reached whatever I could at the same time and I've kind of lost like my my hobby has become my job and I don't know what to do anymore um and maybe you're not in the exact same position but maybe you don't know what you want to be doing like a lot of people I feel like they don't really know what they want and so why not go together on that journey and like figure this out maybe there's a book in that as well where it's like you know what you don't know what you want like let's let's start talking about this or let's get you out of there and take you on that journey so and, it sounds like getting away from trying to be this polished perfect person which I oh, think absolutely that worries a lot of people um, yeah. and it's just sharing your your honest truth and journey is what you're yeah. saying yeah Could, because because it's, people it's, connect with that more there's yeah there's nothing more interesting than than like again Casey Neistat is 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 a brilliant example for that for me because he like of course he chose to show what he wanted to show but he was really open and honest with with the uh, with people who watch him on YouTube and and being so open and so vulnerable that made it interesting that's why I watched his vlog for two years straight like every day just because it was interesting it was mm -hmm. every day you, you got something out of it like you he brought some new topic and every other vlogger was less interesting because it's usually like look at these the five things you shouldn't do like these are 10 mistakes you should be not making on this and this and it's always about tips and tricks and you're like oh like I don't want more tips I just want like I want to get to know someone and and mm -hmm. I feel like Casey Nice said you got to know him as a who he is yeah, and, it's like an insight into his world. And, exactly. And it's like keeping up with and, the nice stats, right? It's like a reality show. Exactly. Like you know how like how he interacts with his wife, with his son, with all of that. And and somehow just you with and, and that's a beautiful thing. It's like you without having to actually do the hard work of being a good friend, you can keep up with someone without like you can just sit back and just Fill that's yourself so up, and it's that's yeah. a great and, and, way of putting it. Because let yeah. me tell you, my friends drain me putting in all this work, like <laughs> having to respond to their texts. I feel like Dustin. I don't want to get back to anyone. It's, it's yeah. true. I was literally thinking it's true. Friends. I mean, friends are hard work. In fact, I think they say like a person can really only truly sustain two to three really good friends yeah. in their life. Yeah. I mean, just the idea of two to me is daunting. Yeah. Hey, we're friends like these. Who needs friends, right, buddy? <laughs> It is work though, right? It's, it's emotional work. It truly is. So yeah, I, I, mean, I so sure. relate to that. The idea of watching somebody and getting to know them and like them is a very quick, easy form of that. It's, it's like, yeah. yeah, it's like the way um, that stalkers and voyeurs are friends with people. <laughs> 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 We're friends, only you but, don't know it. <laughs> yeah, but but that's 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 the side that I, I would be scared about, like so many people like 10 million people follow uh casey on or are subscribed to his channel and like he he knows like 0 0.0001 of them um yeah. and and those people like i could go up to him and like you you came from there you've been through this you have seen this like i know all these things that a good good friend should know um like i know this is your best friend you go to the super bowl with them like it's shocking how much i would know about him but at the same time like like for me i know that i cannot go up to him and walk up to him and just like hey bud like we're best friends like no you're not um so, so but a lot of people would go up to him because they just like you're in this world and and depending what age you are like you have this hard time of actually differentiating like no this is actually not a good friend like I actually don't know him that well and yeah. and so needing so for me like that's the very first time that uh, somebody uh, approached me that was a follower that I had no idea about like that was the weirdest experience ever um, because nobody will 
tell you how that is. Like you just meet them and, but then yeah, learning to say like, just like, awesome, man. Oh, you follow my work. This is like truly being grateful for that person to follow you and just like, like, Hey, thank you so much. Like, like how long have you been following me? And like, often the, the hardest part is like, they, they forget to introduce themselves um, because they know you. So they forget to like, Hey, I'm this and this person. We, so Dustin they're like, oh. and I literally just had this at Creative South. In fact, <laughs> Dustin, we should give, give a little shout out because there was a bunch of listeners that came and said, hi. Amazing. And it blew my mind. I was like, that's so nuts. You listen to the show and you recognize us from I don't yeah. know, maybe from like the little cartoons in the artwork. <laughs> Or from yeah, from the videos really maybe, neat. but but it was nuts and yeah, really humbling, really appreciated well, it. So and they I, know I'm you, which guess... is so weird. Yeah, they and, know um... that I'm a bully jerk. They know that <laughs> that you're, you're... super curious, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm super curious. Yeah. They know they know who you are. Yeah, it's very funny because you're like you. It's like they've done intelligence on you almost. Mm -hmm. Like you know me, but I don't know if I should follow you into that alley. I don't. Can I trust you? <laughs> Wait, you didn't follow them? I did. I did. I never looked back. Turned out fine. <laughs> yeah, it was great. We had margaritas. Um, no, they were um, they were really cool though. So yeah. for any of you who did meet us, who are listening now, we appreciate you guys. You're awesome. You're not stalkers. Far from it. You're charming. <laughs> <laughs> All the hearts. Um, so Stefan. I feel like we're really picking your brain this episode. Go for it. Um, when you're giving these points, we're kind of diving in pretty deep and elaborating on them. But because I have to run in a sec, unfortunately, could you maybe give us like any final tips from your course or your experience that are kind of like quick fire? And I promise that we won't dig into them. We'll just take them for what they are, which is super valuable. Oh, I, okay. I would love to hear one that you're like, whatever you don't, whatever you do, don't do this. Don't do this. Mm, yeah, that would be good. Or both. Uh, just really yeah, both. Both. dance, monkey, dance. Well, the, the, first, <laughs> the, the first one, um, the first one that I want to share about is like the follower's journey. Um, it's something that we don't think about is like, first, you got to acquire people like acquiring people in the sense of like people need to find you in a haystack. Um, just because you're putting out great work doesn't mean that people will see it. Uh, so getting yourself seen is is super important. Um, and, and that gets through like creating viral content that will get featured, like that gets picked up by the algorithm, will be shared, all that stuff. That's one way. But the other way is, is start commenting with people. Gary V talks a lot about this is like, like, bombing someone's instagram is like getting into their either their dms but their comments their their likes like you you'll notice someone uh really being interested in you is like they start to to notice you and and i explain that usually like um a schoolyard you're a kid you're the new kid and and you're just standing in a corner nobody will ever notice that you're new that you're like who you are if you just stand there and do nothing and that's what a lot of people will do is like they stand there um and we'll just like observe other people we'll go up and like get close to other people and just like stare them in the eyes and and just walk around and like you're like <laughs> like a psycho like yeah like <laughs> you like that's weird or like it's like, like you come from my behind. romance yeah. techniques when i was 17 stefan <laughs> <laughs> okay Pretty we got, maybe we should talk I with you next time <laughs> oh cheers i was kidding actually no i'm probably not kidding uh, it was like something out in between us <laughs> um then Sorry. but 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 then the greatest way is like actually going up to someone and then like you give them a tap on the back and you're like like you're the guy kind of like this but that's kind of like the like but if you want to really do it really effective you go to someone you tap them on the back you look at them and you're like dude i love your outfit like your combo like i'll, I'll go to dustin i'm like dude i love your hats uh those green the background in your picture looks really amazing you like you play the guitar like and and he what what happens with him is he starts to notice me because I noticed him and he's like oh he picked up that like I play the guitar and like well you know like it's it's easy because it's in the background and like I haven't asked him much more like like what do you do for a living like I I get into that and I start asking questions and this the moment I start engaging with him that way like not just the the easy like oh you have a uh, you look good 
like something like that or i, I like this post <laughs> yeah like this, i like this, this post. content like, is great exactly like <laughs> exactly like random comments that that don't say nothing what that won't do much <laughs> exactly check out my like, portfolio we <laughs> what what, yeah. what what app have you created you're like read the caption at least or go through a couple of comments because there's someone else who's asked those questions. Yeah, um, but that, the but thing you... is that replying to as many comments as you can, when it's, e it's easy at the beginning when you're yeah. growing from small, but like someone someone posted and said, uh, you know, well done to you. You go through and you reply to these people, even though every time you put it in the description. And I say, but these people might, one, you know, if you reply to people who are asking the mundane questions, one, they will appreciate it and they might end up following you or they might end up buying something from you. So you've got a store like we have and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, never, uh, it, it may be frustrating going through and replying to the mundane questions, but whatever comments you get, make sure you reply. Um, and, you know, as we try... And also, we like in the DMs and stuff like that. Obviously, um, the more you get, the harder it's control. You can end up spending a whole day <laughs> just replying to comments. Exactly. But um, yeah. you but, know, but this is as as soon as you get to a certain size, like this is this is what you do to kind of like keep your like engaging with your uh, followers. Um, but the part where I I want to talk is like more about like to get, start getting people notice you. Um, it sounds really selfish if you if you do it like well you're gonna do it for for some selfish reasons but if you go around instagram and you're like replying like go through a hashtag that f like works with what you're doing like illustration you go to a certain type of topic and you go into that and you start replying but like i said like comments that work like oh i love these color tones you use in this picture um where did you find this or like you you dive into that and yeah, and meaning exactly and and people will reply and notice you and then will hopefully will click on your profile like the best case scenario is is you walk away and kind of again like schoolyard uh, example is they you walk away they look at each other like they look like two friends look at each other like who is this guy like and then somebody's like oh like he's a new kid like you would go in, you would check out their profile and you're like, and then if those people like the work that you've put out, like the last nine pictures you have on your Instagram will be determining whether or not they want to follow you or not. And so mm -hmm. that's, that's kind of the, the thing to get seen, to get like, um, get the attention and start to stand out because there are some lettering artists like Gemma Bryan is in my, in my mind, like, or in my opinion is one of the best, um, illustrative lettering artists out there. Like she creates this amazing work, has a big amount of following. She should have way more because not enough people have seen the account probably and had to decide whether or not they want to follow her or, or not. So you're, and I feel you're like saying if you're smaller, like basically go and engage on a bunch of other people's yeah, profiles who are like, relevant in a sincere in-depth way don't be like a, a networking meeting where it's just about giving out your business card exactly you know that, terrible that just leaves a bad taste you know in the comments mm. <laughs> that, uh, that that is the oh hey have you checked out my page like like delete yeah, this and, and even when you do it like semi sincerely people can smell it a mile yeah. off that you're just yeah, looking for a follow back where yeah, it's like, yeah. hey, I enjoyed this post and the sunset looks pleasant. You know what I mean? You can just tell where it's like, you are just commenting because you want me to check out your page. But I can also and, tell when and, people and are like, the... you know what? Like this really resonated with me. I'm going through some shit at the minute and it meant a lot. It's a yeah. bit like when you say, you know, someone says, oh, how are you doing? And you're like, well, you know, just recently my grandfather passed away and they said oh, well that's nothing about you let's just talk about me i've got a new car i've got a Lamborghini. Oh, it's really nice and i it, said i was sorry for that ian okay <laughs> yeah i <laughs> thought i had to bring it up Tom. i had to bring it up <laughs> but i've talked enough um what about you what do you think about me <laughs> <laughs> nice um, the, um yeah that's like as as soon as you're and and then as soon as you're at a at a certain level, um, like for 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 probably Ian and I when when we start doing this, like it can have this multiple like ripple effects because they often I've had it when when I've commented on on some somebody who followed me like like on a post in a hashtag that I was just going through and like hey this is awesome cool stuff 
um like like they suddenly share that on their stories and like oh, this pip this person commented on my picture like that's that's when you have like following and and good mm -hmm. following like can mm -hmm. can reach more uh, masses i always say this it's like the small gestures which many of us might do to get off the ground the bigger you get the more they're appreciated because people realize you have less time so when like the rock shares something on his stories everyone has a meltdown because it's like holy crap but <laughs> exactly. if i shared the same thing on my story they'd be like yeah thanks <laughs> yeah. Uh, i you know and you genuinely like i think it was like uh, is it um like tom cruise signs or spends ages after a you know on the red carpet signing things and you, you get a reputation no, he's trying to convert them to scientology yeah. it's not autographs <laughs> <laughs> they're signing away their life actually actually i was reading a book probably one that dustin recommended but it was talk triggers actually which is what i recommended to um dustin you know penn and teller the magicians well after their gigs they have like a meet and greet and it's nothing it's no extra cost they make sure they meet and greet everyone they have a photo of everyone and you know for someone who comes along that's a really special moment but for a day big copperfield gig to be able to get a meet and greet for 10 minutes it's an extra like i know 100 200 dollars so it it doesn't become very special and you know there's less of that you know they they do it because they love their fans and they love magic and you know and people generally get excited whereas for like david copperfield it's like he's just trying to make money out of it and it's very weird yeah yeah because I, I remember I, I took my wife and we went to a John Mayer concert. And when we went, it was like for an extra 100 or 150 bucks, you could get a picture and something signed from him. And I was like, I would never pay that to go do that because <laughs> then like it's super awkward. Like I have to funk, come up with something to say to this guy that doesn't even want to <laughs> see me that purely is just getting paid to hear something say yeah, something. Like, it's why would I put myself through that? Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, you know it's and it's being just being genuine isn't it because you're like you know the only, only reason that, like um me and stefan have got a huge following is because people are invested in following our feed or invested in our products and so we're generally thankful that we get to do what we do and so doing you know appreciating your following you know you know giving our time is just part and parcel of where we are is you know when people uh, i would love it if we're all at a conference like next year and i see you and stefan charging for autographs <laughs> that would just yeah. be my favorite thing in the world if you're like whoa go away buddy Pop yeah. up. that's not enough whereas like me and you tom could charge for autographs and it would just be an empty room <laughs> <laughs> it'd just be me and you like chit-chatting over some coffee like people poke you, their head in you mean yeah, like no, creative no. south where we went around trying to pay people to take selfies with us <laughs> just pretend you like us right oh, grease their palms that's pitiful oh. <laughs> cool um stefan you've been a fantastic guest yes Thank you me. have i I nearly asked you for another tip because I just want to pick your brain forever. <laughs> That's um, not even I'm going to start. To I know. <laughs> um, I believe oh, you're actually shit. coming on the uh, community hangout tomorrow at Design Cuts, though. That so is right. Apologies in advance. You're going to be sick of the sight of me, but um, <laughs> I appreciate all the value you're bringing to the design community. Um, Absolutely. Stefan, where can people find you and like anything you're working on? This is the time. Plug it up. You've been so great. Everyone go check out what Stefan's about to say um so currently it's instagram my my main account where you'll get the most from me will be instagram uh ramping up is youtube so expect something to come in the next month um i'll be doing a big reveal for that um if if it all works out i have a friend who's coming over for for just to see if we'll work well together um then my my sites if yeah, if you have a business, if you have something like work to be done, uh, you can reach out to me on, on my website. And of course, uh, if you want to know a lot more about social media, uh, you'll also find that in uh, on amandaarneal.com. Um, you'll find an online course on, on that. I've done it with her. Um, and it's a great course with a ton of content with like uh, stuff, um, what, what's the stuff. course called? It's called Mastering Social Media. Nice. It's it's a brilliant title that sounds so clickbaity. No, it doesn't. 
<laughs> um, so yeah, everyone listening, please go check out Stefan's Instagram, his website, stefankunis.com, his course, Mastering Social Media. Go check out all of that. And Stefan, thank you again for coming on. You were awesome. I hope you'll join us again in the future. Absolutely. But appreciate it, buddy. It's a, it's a good hang. It's a good Wednesday night. Give it up, <laughs> Stefan, everyone. Woo! Thanks so much for listening to this week's episode. As always, you can find full show notes over at honestdesigners.com or find us over on iTunes and now Spotify by searching for The Honest Designers Show. And remember, we're now on social media too if you search for Honest Designers. If today's episode helped you, then it would mean the world to us if you took just a moment to leave us a quick review over on iTunes, as this is one of the best ways for other designers to discover the show. Thanks again for tuning in and we will see you next week right here on The Honest Designers Show.